image and sound and Kevin. Hey, I'm Kevin, and we're back at Dolby Headquarters, who sponsored our trip to San Francisco to talk to some of the creative minds behind Dolby Cinema. That. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and join me as we experience the unique sights and sounds of, oh look, it's Glenn. Hey Kevin, welcome back to Dolby. Oh hey Glenn, yeah, it's great to be back. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry there's no popcorn in this cinema. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Learning things every day. On our previous visit, we learned about Dolby Atmos, as well as Dolby Vision. So let's quickly recap. Dolby Atmos allows for sound to be precisely panned anywhere in the room, including over the audience's head. Dolby Vision provides a higher dynamic range, more vivid colors, and greater contrast than what we're used to seeing in a standard theater. So now let's see how these technologies are implemented in the cinema. This is Dolby Cinema. So uh, can you tell me a little about these projectors here? Absolutely. So the Dolby Vision projector system consists of two projectors. Each projector has a different set of laser wavelengths. If we take a look actually up at the port glass up here, you can see two different streams of light coming out. So we have a right and left eye, which is used for showing 3D movies. Up in the booth, there's two projector heads, which is where all of the optical components are, where all the light is distributed inside of those two projector heads. And up there as well, there are two banks of lasers. Mm -hmm. Each bank of lasers has each set of those three laser primaries in the cooling system. And that light is piped into the projectors. Mm -hmm. So these projectors could show a red or a purple that you would never see in a standard cinema. These projectors are also much brighter than the standard projector, over twice as bright. These projectors let out 108 nits, whereas a standard projector is 48 nits. The second distinguishing characteristic of these projectors is the contrast ratio. In the Dolby Cinema, it's true black. Because what you thought was black isn't. This is black. This is contrast that reveals details deeper than any image you've seen on a screen. It sounds silly going from a super, super dark gray to like a slightly darker black. Like that's how it may look on your phone right now. It's it's insane. Like you you immediately just well, sense you know, effectively yeah. the room goes completely black. It's like somebody turned the lights out, yeah. which they literally did, right? And and the room goes completely black, and you can't see anything. So you get this tremendous dynamic range, this million to one dynamic range, coupled with the much wider color palette of the laser light sources that we use. And so that combination really gives the editors and the colorists who master the movie a huge envelope to work in. For example, in an animated movie, they can go wild in that. The editors really use the extended dynamic range of the projector and it really enhanced the experience. So can I just play any movie on Adobe Cinema with Dolby Vision and will I get the best result? Yes, you can show mm -hmm. any movie on the projector and it will look great, but it'll look an, a lot better if it's done if it's done specifically in the Dolby Vision workflow. Okay. This is Dolby Atmos. With powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Atmos, we're able to precisely pinpoint a sound in the room. And that's a big deal, because if you think about the way that the speakers are set up in a typical cinema that's not Atmos, there's a row of speakers on the side wall, there might be some speakers on the back wall, and if you want to put a sound of a door slam that's off stage, you're going to light up that whole wall. Those all fire as one big channel. So now, you can play something, a bird is up in the sky, instead of lighting up the whole wall with bird sound, you can put it exactly where the character is looking. 
And that's an amazing thing. And I think the audience really does feel that. They feel a better connection to, to where the actors are looking off stage, if that's you know, what the director intends. So when we were in the uh, Dolby Cinema today, we couldn't see any of the speakers. Can you tell us a little bit about what's actually going on there? The design criteria of the cinemas is that you can't see most of the surrounds. They're all covered up. And part of that is you're pulled more into the story and you're less distracted by offstage speakers if you can't see any. The other major component is that as an audience member, it's a bigger sound because all of the surrounds are required and the overheads are required to be full range. So by full range, I mean that the lowest lows and the highest highs uh, of the, the audible range of your hearing can actually be reproduced in a speaker. The average speakers in a movie theater used to be cut off at seven kilohertz. Using Atmos, you're hearing everything from 20 kilohertz all the way down to 20 hertz, you know, in a good system. Theaters are, have been always giving you that same fidelity in the front of the room, but not in the back of the room. What happens if the number of speakers, say, in the theater I go see the movie in is a different number of speakers than where the movie was mixed? Well, chances are, that's going to be the case. When you have a Dolby processor in your cinema, we could mix it once and it could conform to as many speakers are in every location. So there's a few different design elements that, that have gone into the space. So as you approach the actual cinema, you see this very monolithic gateway-like entrance. As you pass through that gateway, you then walk through what we call an audio-visual pathway. So that consists of a floor-to-ceiling, um, short-throw projector wall. The idea behind that signature entrance is that it would cut the noise of the actual cinema lobby. It's sort of the, the journey that, that separates you from the real world and going into that, that cinematic world. What you also notice is the floating curve screen. The idea behind that curve screen is that every seat in the house actually has a good viewing angle. So you can be sitting in the front row like, like us right now. It looks pretty good. It's a big screen for sure, but at least you can kind of capture the full view of the picture rather than kind of seeing things trail off left and right. This is what you're sitting in in our headquarters right now. This is our prototypical vision. In most of the case, this is what we're applying to all the sites around the world. There are about 58 surround speakers, about 10 subwoofers, so there's a lot of technology, but we don't want that to be visible. We have put a lot of work into thinking about the details of even how stair lighting works. So rather than highlighting the edge of the stairs with like point lights of LEDs, it's an indirect light that projects onto the actual face of the stair, but it also doesn't cast onto the screen. Even something as specific as a seat, I mean, these are things we consider from a technical and from an experiential standpoint. Even if the seats were a higher sheen of leather, they potentially can reflect light back to the screen. Um, even the way that the backs of the seats are sculpted may reflect sound you know, to your ears in a different way. So we literally go to like the depths of these details in terms of all of the, the design choices and engineering choices we make. You know, the path that we're starting to go down, it's really meant to play to the sophistication of the audience and the filmmaker. What's the reaction to Adobe Cinema been from the filmmaker community? So it's, it's actually pretty interesting in that um, every filmmaker we show this technology to and this concept to, they're totally excited about it. They see how much more detail they can get with a visual and audio experience through Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. The director and the creators, when they create these films, they create them to be shown in a, an environment like a Dolby Cinema, right? And so if you want to get everything out of the film, you want to go to a Dolby Cinema to see that. So we're sitting in an incredible theater, but how does the regular moviegoer get to experience this? Right, so we just announced we've, uh, we've installed 100 Dolby Cinemas around the world. And you're gonna expand that in the future? Uh, we are, yeah, we're, we're not stopping at 100. <laughs> we're gonna continue on. Um, yeah, we'll continue on. We have a commitment for about 325 screens worldwide. Um, we'll continue to evolve on the technology. Every Dolby Cinema you go to has Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision, and so you'll get a very similar experience to what you get here. Um, and you know, it's a great experience no matter where you go in a Dolby Cinema. I guess you know, the thing I'm realizing now that I have a moment to think about it is how much room there still is for cinema to continue to grow as a technology and as an experience. 
It's something that's hard to kind of quantify in words because it's an experience I've really not had before. It's, uh, it's pretty cool, which sounds like a college thesis, but um, yeah, yeah. Kevin, are you still here?